Welcome back to Cook It Simple with Eric. Today we are making, it's just a super duper pot roast. It has six ingredients. I'm sure everybody has heard of it. It's one of my favorite things to make because it's quick, it's simple, it gets the job done and it packs so much flavor. So we're actually making a Mississippi pot roast today. So, and I always like to have it with smashed potatoes. So let's dig in. Let's get this thing cooked. So the ingredients we'll be using today are the main star here is our chuck roast. It's about 2.7 pounds. We're going to be using half cup or one stick of your unsalted butter. I go unsalted because the ranch seasoning pack has quite a bit of salt. So I just that's my way of dialing it back a little bit. But we are doing a one ranch seasoning packet. And usually it calls for au jus gravy. Um, the, I have a family member, as we all know, that's gluten intolerant and will be eating it. So I just add the uh, gluten-free brown gravy mix. Still makes it just perfect. And last but not least, we'll be doing about a half a jar of your pepperoncinis. Um, I got sliced. The recipe normally calls for like the full pepper, put about six or eight of them in there. I like to do the sliced, it's just easier to eat them. So let's get started. Now this is a very simple recipe for chuck roast. You can see the some marbling in it. That was about the best one I could find at the store when I was picking it out. So let's go ahead and get this one put in real quick. Now sometimes people like to sear these in the skillet all sides, top and bottom, season them up, put them in. That does make a difference, but today I have very limited time, so I'm showing you the simple way to do that. So we just lay our chuck roast in. Let me clean my hands real quick. So now we'll just want to add our seasoning mix to the top of it. Just sprinkle it on the top, let it go over the sides a little bit. It's like I said, super simple recipe. We just throw the stuff in, set it for, in this case, we're going to set it for six hours on high. If you want to go eight hours on low, that's fine. Whatever your time frame is. My time frame is about six and a half hours plus a half to film, so that's why we're going with the six hours. All right, so once we have that, then we're going to use our pepperoncinis. We're going to do about a half a jar of the juice and about a half a jar of the peppers. Like so. And like I said, if you're using the full peppers, you know, just pepper them to taste. I normally put about eight of them when I use the full peppers. But these give a nice little sweetness. They're kind of almost pickled tasting. So you definitely want to use the pepperoncinis. If you want to add a little more heat, add whatever, but the traditional recipe is what I'm showing you. Put that in. A little more of the juice. I just put about half jar of juice in. That should be good. The, the roast itself, it, it will produce some juices as well. You'll be amazed at the end how much juice and gravy you have. All right, so now I'm just going to add our unsalted butter, one stick. We're just going to set that right on the top. Just like so. Let that melt down, do its thing. I will add just a touch of pepper. I won't add any salt because all the seasonings in there. But pepper I will just add just a little bit. Let it do its thing. So now we just set the lid on it. Come back in six hours and I'll see you then. Alright, it's been six hours. Let's see if this is fork tender. Oh yeah, as you can see, 
fork goes in, turns nicely. Our gravy's got the nice build up around it, so let's get this thing plated and give it a try. Let's see how quickly I can get this plated and looking pretty. We're going to try there. Try, that. try these first, which worked out good, thank goodness. We get some of this gravy and butter. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful gravy. Then we'll get it shredded here just a second. Now this recipe does get a little buttery, so you know I love butter, but you can actually, if you like, go ahead and use one or like a half stick of butter if you choose. done to perfection. Like I said, I did it quick at six hours on high. And you can definitely go a little bit low for eight hours, which will probably give you a little more tender result. But with my time frame today, I've had to kind of get it, get it going. There's Stuart. Hey, buddy. gravy on here then we'll get it plated up I gotta get some mashed potatoes made and have my daughter over to this evening for she was wanting some dinner so all right as you see there's the good stuff looking good so let's get stuff on a plate and try it now for the part we've all been waiting for Take a little try of this. I made some mashed potatoes. So we've got our mashed potatoes, a little bit of butter. I just set mine on the side. Some people like to set that right on top with some gravy, however you want to do it. A little bit there, get some peppers in there. Got a piece of fat there I'll dig out later. All right, here we go. We're going to give this a try because it is actually just took a little taste of the gravy. It does have some spice to it. So, way to go. It's all right. So, here we go. If you can see it, we're going to try it. Let's try the meat here first. Just get a little bit off there. The gravy turned out excellent. It's nice. Got a little sticky gravy to it. Put a little mashed potato with that. Let's see. Here we go. For the few ingredients we use, this thing packs a lot of flavor. You have to try it. You'll absolutely love it. Everybody I make this for loves it. My daughter came over this evening because she knew I was making it, so great company. But we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for tuning in, checking out Cook It Simple with Eric. Uh, next week we'll probably make a dessert next week we haven't made one for a while but until then please like share subscribe thank you so much and I'll see you next week